I have the, I think it's the honor of calling you to order. But my major honor this evening is to have been asked to introduce Dr. Ibrahim this evening for his service and commitment to transparency, accountability, and good government on the African continent. Born in Sudan, he founded the Mobile Systems International, a world-leading cellular consulting and software provider, and Celtel International, one of Africa's leading mobile telephone companies, which pioneered mobile services in Africa. He also founded and is chairman of Capital Limited, a private equity fund focused on Africa. Now, while he has had a tremendous successful business career, it is for his support of good governance and leadership in Africa and his tireless work to improve and strengthen democratic governance that we honor him tonight. In 2006, he launched the Mo Ibram Foundation and has become one of the leading voices of strengthening governance on the continent. He has said, Africa's future, governance is everything. Without governance, we have nothing. And I couldn't agree more. Through my years on IRI's Board of Directors and having served as Assistant Secretary of State, and we have the sitting secretaries, Assistant Secretary of State for Africa here and the previous one, and I think they'll all agree with me that the problems of poor governance and corruption have caused for the continent are unacceptable. I've also seen these problems addressed successfully by government and leaders who govern in an open and democratic manner and who are accountable to their citizens. Dr. Ibrahim has often raised the issue of the division between the governed and their leaders. For him, part of the reason for the division is the age difference between the citizen population and their leaders. In many instances, there's an age difference of over 40 years with the average age of the population being 20 years and the leaders 60 plus. Furthermore, there's limited evidence that the aged leaders are listening to the youth. Of this growing divide, he has said, political power lies in the hands of the aging leaders who have little knowledge or interest in the ambitions and concerns of the younger generations, and sadly, even less interest in passing on the reins of leadership. Furthermore, he has pointed out there is often a reluctance of the African leaders to leave office when their term of office is over. Through the Ibram Prize for Achievement in African Leadership, his foundation is addressing this problem head on. The prize honors leaders who have been elected, governed democratically, who have dedicated their tenure in office to developing their countries, improving the welfare and livelihood of their people, and paving the way for sustainable development, and who importantly serve their constitutionally mandated term. The prize offers opportunities for leaders who have left national office to continue in other public roles across the continent and encourages the engagement of African citizens in the leadership debate. He's rightly said, Africa will only fully reap the benefits of its youth if its decision makers listen to young people, engage with them, and provide them the education, skills, and support they need to prosper. 
Inspired by Dr. Ibrahim, IRI has formally launched Generation Democracy, which equips young men and women with the leadership skills necessary to become the next generation of democratic actors in their communities. Generation Democracy joins IRI's Rising Stars Initiative, which helps emerging democratic leaders gain knowledge and skills to prepare them to address their country's challenges with sound and proven policies and govern in an open, transparent, and democratic manner. The goals of these initiatives is best captured by what Dr. Ibram himself has said, which is, it's time Africa started listening to our young people instead of always telling them what to do. It is their potential, after all, which will decide our continent's future. Let's not waste it. For his work and commitment to transparency, accountability, and good governance on the African continent, it is my honor to present the 2015 Freedom Award to Dr. Mo Ibram. If I could ask uh, the Senator McCain and you also, Dr. Ibram, to come join me on the stage. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Corey, and uh, I really my gratitude uh, to the IRI, to the board, its chairman, and to the president uh, for their kindness. I, I must say, I never expected uh, to win any prize in Washington because it's not my kind of town. Uh, I'm, I'm an African, and. Uh, I, I really have very little things to do around here. And I was uh, very, very flattered to know that, find out that some people here know about what we're doing over there. Uh, so really thank you very much for your uh, uh, kindness and uh, your interest uh, in Africa. And I understand I need to, uh, I suppose to say a few words, and uh, I'm not very good at re reading speeches. I always speak from my heart, so excuse me if I, uh, you know, I become, become a little bit incoherent or, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but at least it will be honest what, what, what I really feel, uh, not what any speech writer uh, wrote, wrote, uh, wrote to me. Uh, let me just uh, start by saying Africa is just an amazing place. This is one of the biggest continents on earth. It is a huge continent. And uh, we, we only have one billion people. All Africa, 54 countries in Africa. Africa is not one country, huh? it's 54 countries. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we are all one billion people. That's much less than the Indians, much less than the Chinese. And you can take all of India, put it in Africa, take all China, you know, geographically, put it in Africa add United States, add Western Europe, and throw in a few other countries, you still have more space. It's a huge continent, and it is a rich continent. Per kilometer square is probably the richest in the, in the world. Uh, we have the land, we have the ocean, we have and not too many, too many people, and you just think, why then we are poor? And that, that's a very interesting question. We have the land, we have the resources, we have the oceans around us, and we are not many people. So why are we poor? And uh, the only answer, we are poor because of misrule. 
misrule and lack of good governance. It's a waste of the resources, it's a waste of both human resources, natural resources, it's a terrible situation uh, which ended up really uh, uh, with us where we are. There's no other reason. And so it's clear to me for Africa to move forward, we, Africa, need really to take charge of our future and start to ask ourselves, why, why, why are we making a mess here? Why can't we run this place in, 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 a, in a better way? And the heart of that is governance. And the lack of good governance was really our, our, our issue. Still, it is our issue. And good governance, in, in, in what I think, or my views anyway, is not just about having elections of four years, not just about you know, the, 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 the appearance of, of democracy. I come from Sudan. Uh, President Bashir has been there for like 30 years or so. General Bashir, actually, should call him. Otherwise, I'll be short, maybe. Anyway, uh, <laughs> he, he decided recently that he better, you know, he decided to be a Democrat and to have some elections in Sudan. It's fashionable nowadays to be a Democrat. And uh, so we had two recent elections in Sudan. And uh, of course, he won the two elections handsomely. And uh, we watched CNN, and I saw President Carter, his people, he was there, I think, himself, and we said, yeah, it is a peaceful election. Of course it is a peaceful election, because the guy won the election way before the election day. <laughs> so, 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 so simple, because those guys have a rigged voters register. 15 million voters, four million of them do not exist. Do not exist. Villages of population of 100 people reg registered like 120, 130 votes. When the whole population is 100 people, including babies and including, you know. I, so that is how people master the electoral uh, or the election process. And when you do that, you don't, you don't need to beat up people. Why you beat up people in the election day? And then all those nice American observers come to Sudan and the nice uh, American TV stations come to Sudan and say, wow, it is a, it's a peaceful election. It's wonderful. Uh, no, it is not. <laughs> <laughs> and it is it's all democracy. If opponents were not allowed to, to, to campaign, if people actually were in prison, and uh, uh, you know the amount of, 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 of repression we had in the country, then the stuffing of the uh, ballot boxes, etc. What I'm trying to say, really, is not about appearances. It's not about show. Democracy really is about the election, the integrity of the election processes, about the rule of law, it's about institutions, about lack of corruptions, about transparency, about education, about health, about gender issues, protection of the rights of minorities. And it's all this, it's a basket of these public goods which governments and leaders really need to deliver to their people. That is how we really judge open society and judge uh, good governance. It's not by the appearances of uh, a democratic process, etc. Africa has fortunately also had, uh, I must say, a very troubled history, recent history. Uh, of course, you are aware we had slavery in Africa, and uh, slavery is something you are aware of here, I think, because I think we had slavery here too, is that correct? Yeah. And, uh, after that, we had colonialism, we, 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 which was not fortunate. But something also bad happened after the decolonization process. Because in the 1960s, we started to gain our independence in Africa, about 50 years ago or so. Uh, but then, if you remember, there's something called the Cold War. And in my view, Africa suffered more in the Cold War than it suffered during, it, during uh, uh, colonization. Uh, we had two huge camps there. Uh, 
uh, and the historical fight, you remember that. And uh, the world was a chess board, really, and people joking for control of the chess board. And Africa was a beast in that chess board. And uh, superpowers interested in client states. And it doesn't matter if you are a criminal, dictator, or whatever, as long as you are with us. This, frankly, was the situation there because people had other priorities to defeat the other uh, 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 terrible camp or other enemy. That was the main enemy. And in the process, we can trample on issues of democracy or transparency, et cetera. And we ended up with people like Mobutu and uh, Idi Amin and Bokassa, et cetera, supported by one camp. We ended up with some crazy guys in Ethiopia and somewhere supported by the other camp, and because that was your book. People interested in client states. So it's not a big issue. The day the Berlin Wall uh, came down was a wonderful day for Africa, actually, not only for Germany, because that was the end of the Cold War. And if you notice, the democratic situation in, in Africa it started to improve dramatically after the 90s, after the collapse of the Berlin War, after the end of the Cold War, because then the democratic forces in the world were able now to assign their priorities correctly and to come out in support of democracy and better governance in Africa. There's no issue of uh, really supporting client states or criminals just because you fought for us in UN or give us a base here or a base there. And that was a very uh, great moment of triumph uh, for Africa until things started uh, to move on uh, from there. Uh, that is important. And frankly, I'm very delighted to be here in, 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 in this wonderful place and to be awarded uh, such an honor for the American institution is really a, a wonderful mark. Uh, America matters, the United States matters. It doesn't matter only for you guys, it also matters for us. And it's important to say it matters, not because you have the, the, the most powerful military in the world, although that counts, let's not uh, beat around the bush here, but it matters because what the country represents for us, it is your, your ability to innovate, to reinvent yourself. You create, you invented social mobility. And uh, it is this energy, uh, the, the, your constitution, your institutions, even your music, your arts, this is what I call the soft power of this country. And this really matters. So please use it wisely. And thank you very much for the order. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.